Shakespeare off down the River Thames, the most historic river in the world, the river which made London the world's largest city. Into it came the invading Romans, Saxons, Danes and Normans. Out of it, into the world beyond, sailed merchant adventurers, explorers or seamen in search of wealth, knowledge or conquest. Because of the Thames, London was a famous city 2,000 years ago. Without the river, London wouldn't be here, or the Mother of Parliaments either. You wouldn't have needed a building this size to house the London County Council, which governs over nine million Londoners. The old and the new are all jumbled together. Here's the Royal Festival Hall, built during the Festival of Britain. And here's the old shot tower. More contrasts. Shell Mix House, with the largest clock face in London. And Cleopatra's Needle, carved nearly 3,500 years ago. Through Waterloo Bridge, built just over 20 years ago, and moored just below, is Captain Scott's discovery, in which he explored the Antarctic in 1900. Lying astern is London's only floating guild, the Wellington, headquarters of the Honourable Company of Master Mariners. London's crowning glory, St Paul's Cathedral, built on the spot where, legend says, St Paul himself once preached. During World War II, it survived bombs and fire. Many power stations are on the Thames, but this one is the only oil-burning power station. Even so, it produces its fair share of smoke. Centuries ago, many a trip down the river ended at the Tower of London. Traitor's Gate was the way to the dungeons, the torture chambers and the execution block. In its 900 years, the tower has been a fortress, a palace and a prison. Tower Bridge, the last bridge before the Thames reaches the sea. The huge bascules weigh 1,100 tons each, but they can be raised in two or three minutes for ships with high masts coming upstream. And no charge is made either. Now we're entering what Ruskin called that mysterious forest below London Bridge. A teeming labyrinth of wharfs, warehouses, quays and docks. The Port of London. It was a busy trading station even in Roman times. From this building, the Port of London Authority runs the port and 69 miles of the river. and the river has its own police. Smugglers, pirates, invaders, exiles, stowaways, they've all come this way. Those who didn't get caught called at this inn for a drink. Today it's just as popular, but more respectable. Parts of the inn are 600 years old. Charles Dickens wrote about it in Our Mutual Friend. The hundreds of barges on the Thames carry anything. Oil, fuel for the power stations, food, merchandise. And the 250 shipped ashore tugs in the Port of London handle two thirds of the 50 million tons of cargo which reach London every year. This tanker has its mast down so that it can pass upstream beneath the bridges. In the midst of the swirling river life, this missions to seamen vessel, the John Ashley, is a floating refuge of quiet and contemplation. Men who can't get ashore come aboard to rest, to write a letter, or read, or watch a cinema show, or worship. They aren't pressed to do so. 
and don't have to dress up to attend service. But the simple sincerity in this tiny floating church is a moving experience. Draw me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit, for thou art my spirit. A fifth of all shipping using British ports passes through the Port of London. And you sometimes see visiting warships too. Without its 2,000 acres of docks, London would be nothing. 75 million tons of shipping used it in 1958, twice as much as in 1946. The port handles one-third of all Britain's imports and exports, and it costs the Port of London Authority over £17 million a year for services, equipment and maintenance. London is an important distributing centre for Britain generally, but much of the food to feed nine million Londoners also comes here. This Australian ship holds 8,000 tonnes of grain. It's being sucked up by a vacuum into a store which holds enough to feed the entire population of London for a week. Food from all parts of the earth. Over half a million tonnes of meat a year, mostly from Australia, New Zealand and the Argentine. Twenty-one thousand tons of wines and spirits. One hundred and three thousand tons of wool, much of it from Australia. from everywhere and timber from Russia, the Baltic, Canada. The longer a ship's in port, the more it costs the owner. So naturally the port which loads and unloads quickest gets the trade. Millions of pounds have been spent in making good war damage and modernizing London docks. Further down river and nearest the sea are Tilbury docks, the gateway to Britain and to the world. The world's ocean-going passenger liners come and go. For many travellers, it is their first or last impression of Britain. Girls who work at one of the big riverside warehouses are used to seeing the craft go by. But here was something special. The Queen had making a tour of the docks. On her way back, she disembarked at Tower Pier and boarded the Royal Launch for the rest of the journey to Westminster. Once upon a time, English sovereigns came by river from the Tower to Westminster for their coronation. Today, the Thames is again a ceremonial route. So in the bustling life of our time, tradition lives on. And for the Queen, as for anyone, a trip down the Thames is something to remember.